But I never laugh at anybody because I know the man struggle. I come, I come from a place where anything's possible and, and I've changed all my odds as well. My stars have been changed um, because I, couldn't, I may not have been here today um, if things would have went a little bit different. Um, so I never underestimate anybody. And people are like, especially the fucking media, they're like, oh, Francis doesn't have a chance. So I say, if I go to the boozer, the old battle cruiser across the road, yeah, and I get in a brawl with a, with a guy, a drunken guy, he's going to hit me and he might have a chance of knocking me out. So how am I not going to prepare 100% for an absolute killing machine over there? Um, he's trying to take my brains out. I will give Francis the respect that he deserves as one, as a warrior, and two, as a man, and three, as a world champion, what he is. Um, he's a big man, very strong, very powerful. And it's, um, it's in my interest to give it the 100% training in camp and bring in the best sparring possible for me. Uh, I've got my nutritionist here, George Lockhart. will do a 12-week camp with George. I've been in camp already for, this is my fifth week in camp. Um, let's not forget, I only trained six weeks for Deontay Wilder. I'm doing 12 weeks for Francis Ngannou. 12 weeks. So I need to be on my A game because there's more on the line now than a boxing fight. You know, if I lose to a number one contender, another champion, it's like, well, he lost to a champion, whatever. But if I lose to an MMA guy, I'm never going to be able to show my face in public again. It's going to be ridiculed. People are going to chuck it at me forever. So there's more riding on this than there ever has been before. And whether the media want to take it as a joke or whatever they want to take it as, make no mistake, Tyson Fury will leave zero stones unturned and I will come in at me fittest and strongest and best I've ever been to defeat this man. And if I'm not and I get knocked out, I want you all to laugh at me. That's what I want because I'll deserve it. Only an idiot wouldn't train the bollocks off of somebody like Francis. The man's a machine and I'll, I'll give him 100% respect and I'm in the gym every day training and I can't do no more. And it's all God's will now, all God's will. This is meant to be. It's been written in the stars 100 years before we're even born. This is our time, our moment in the sun. This is us. And he thinks it's in a dream as well. How do you think I feel? I'm in a dream too. I jog down the road sometimes and I think, am I gonna wake up in a minute? Has this all been a dream? And then it's a reality. So as much as Francis is so excited to be here, so am I. I'm very, very excited, very, very blessed to be in this position. And I'm not in this position because, oh, I'm a good boxer or I work harder than the next man. I'm in this position because God willed it. That's it, nothing else. Just uh, on Francis Ngannou's power. Now, Tyson, you are no stranger to taking on big, big punches. But they measured his punch, and he hits as hard as a small family car. Are you concerned about Francis Ngannou's power? I, uh, I seen the, um, the video of him hitting the, the pad thing. Listen, the guy's a big puncher. You can see he's, he's very big and strong and very well built. But, you know, I fought big punches before, like Deontay Wilder, and I even fought the old uh, Dr. Steelhammer, v uh, Vladimir Klitschko. And the one thing that both of them had in common were... They both were massive punchers, but they both couldn't land it when it counted. And it's okay being a big, strong puncher in a target that don't move, but it's pretty difficult hitting this hand full power when it's moving like that. So you can't hit what you can't see. And, you know, I'm not the best at what I do because I'm easy to hit. I'm the best at what I do because I'm the most elusive world champion in history, and that's facts. ESPN will back that up. So, yeah, if he can land it on me... He's definitely got good aim, and he's been training. So, you know, it's, uh, I don't think he can. I don't think anyone can land it on me. That's a fact. And if they do, I'll just get back up. Because I get knocked down, but I get up again. You're never going to keep me down. And that's what it is. So, yeah, can't wait. All right, Francis, let me... Uh, We're going to find out on October 28th how, how good you move. You, you, you know how good I move. I'm like the Matrix in there, yeah, baby. I know. And you know I'm going to find you. I know you can fight, and I know you can punch hard, too. So I know it. I'm not underestimating it. I'm expecting a tough fight. If it's anything less than a 10-round war, 12 rounds, however many rounds it is, I'll be disappointed. I'm expecting a war. And if it's not a war, I'm going to be disappointed. You, you, you get it. People, you get, you, people, you get people, your war. We're both from being the paid that you a lot of money From the moment that you signed for, uh, yeah. for this fight, So we're going to entertain. War. So this no is doubt entertainment. about it. I'm coming for, for everything. Good, and, and so you should. And if you beat me, you become the lineal world heavyweight champion. It goes back to the days of John L. Sullivan, the man who beat the man who beat the man who beat the man, going back to the, the olden days. You will be the Uno, number one in the division. 
So, yeah, f fantastic um, opportunity and, and fair play to you if you can do it. I'll, I'll walk across the ring, shake your hand, give you a kiss and take you out for a beer. <laughs> Alcohol free, of course. <laughs> let's, uh, let's bring in Bob Arum. It's, it's sizzling up nicely, Bob. Yeah. You know, a lot of you uh, writers out there say uh, Francis comes from a different discipline and therefore going in with a top, top boxer like Tyson Fury, he has no chance. Now, what I suggest is go look at the tapes of Francis's UFC fights and see if you're convinced that he has no chance because I have never seen anybody with the power, whether it's boxing or MMA, that he has, Francis has. Now, Tyson is quite correct. Boxing is different. And boxing, it's not necessarily who hits the hardest, but how you can land your punches. So this will be not only a massive event in a great country, in a great place that's emerging as the an inter, entertain, entertainment capital, but a significantly interesting fight that people will be talking about for years and decades to come. Thank you, Bob. Fra Francis, I just want to touch on, on, on one thing, the weight of this fight. Now, when you're in the MMA world, you have to cut weight to make 265 pounds. You can weigh whatever you want in this fight against Tyson Fury. You're, you're a big, big guy. How big are you expecting to be in there? And will you actually be uh, bigger than Tyson Fury? What do you think? I want to be in shape. I want to feel good, you know, and that's why like, uh, I, have a, uh, I have a whole team around me to work on that. I have a great uh, strength conditioner, uh, conditioning uh, coach. Um, I have a sh nutritionist, a chef, that work in order to make that. So, uh, and I've been fighting in the high level for so long now. Uh, I know it's good for me where is the uh, middle ground for me with good weight um, and most energy, right? So I don't want to compromise my energy in order to lose weight and I don't want to compromise my, uh, uh, in, uh, my weight by uh, getting more energy. So it's going to be in the middle and that I think we have that figured out. How do you win this fight, Francis Ngarni? Excuse me? How do you win this fight? How do I win this fight? Um, usually I would say knockout because that's what comes first. But, I mean, I know the guy in front of me. I have watched Tyson fight uh, live personally uh, so many times. I have watched a lot of tape about him. And it's very sleeky, you, you know, so, uh, and that's why I put a lot of focus on my uh, delivery system that we were talking about earlier, because he's a guy that is very, very hard to hit. Um, so I'm working about, uh, about that, and I'm aware that he might not get that punch, maybe not in full uh, with full power, but I'm, I'm making sure that however it goes, the victory will be mine in Riyadh on October 28th, the victory will be mine. And whether it's knockout or decision, that doesn't matter. The V is what matters. Well, let me ask you this. You mentioned there, uh, if it lands, as I've said, you've got the hardest punch in the world. If it does land completely clean on Tyson Fury, what would happen? If it does land, good night. <laughs> Lies off. I mean, what do you think will happen? Oh, well, I'm going to ask Tyson. I'm not going to say. I mean, not to mention that this is a heavyweight fight. And that's what is very excited about heavyweight. Uh, we know that everybody in the heavyweight division can knock everybody out. You don't need to have a tremendous power. I'm not walking there just like, oh, Tyson Fury can knock me out. No, bro. I'm not going there to put my shin. I'm going there to fight, hit, and not get hit. I think that's the rules of boxing. And that's why... Uh, I'm very aware of that, and that's why I'm taking this very serious uh, in all the components of the discipline. 
Paul Thompson, you've just heard it. If he lands that punch, that punch that's been recorded, that hits like a small family car, he says it's good night. Thoughts? I can't have a comment until I felt his power. Remember when I got the old Alabama slammer up on stage and said, hit me in the face, go on. I wanted to feel his power. I haven't felt um, Francis's power, so I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be like. Is it going to be like so much different to any of a heavyweight I've ever fought? Probably not. Will it bounce off me? Probably so, because I'm bulletproof. It's, uh, it's one of them things. It's